Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the Royal Rumble campaign where I'm trying to survive as long as possible in legendary Iron Man land with 90 plus mods, double enemy squad side, uh, as well as yellow alert. We just lost New Mexico. Uh, that was the last mission that we played. We then spent eight days in order to get New Mexico back just to have another mission here. And this time it's even more serious. We need to go into Operation Hammer Witch, a very difficult mission. And I would underpin that it is potentially really going to be very, very difficult. Um, and we're going to fight to prevent the first installment of Dark Cloak. That is one of those uh, new side events which we have uh, going uh, so those are additional events besides the Avatar project. And Dark Cloak as an event makes all of uh, Advent completely immune to physical damage. Yep, you heard that uh, correct. That is, uh, or that would be pretty, pretty devastating because we're not having any Psy operatives yet. And the way that things are going with our resources, I'm not sure if we're going to get them very soon. So long-winded way of saying this is a must win for us and it certainly doesn't help that Praetorians are supposed to be in the area, bandits and Dark Elder on top of it. So it's going to be the literal definition of a Royal Rumble. We actually need to hack a workstation. <clears throat> I brought Shadow with us just to make sure that we're that were countering the dark event. I'm willing to sacrifice him um, if that means that the dark event is not coming through. <coughs> but we've also brought kind of uh, the uh, parts of the main team, Sonar and Euler, um, indeed will be helping us to hopefully deal enough damage. Death from above Euler has been a steady carry of this completely over the top run so far. Russ and Slicinator are fine as well. So we got the double um, heavy, which I have uh, started to run more and more in the last missions. Not because uh, heavies are the most OP class, they are actually quite good, but uh, mostly because many of the mods just include a lot of armor and we need to shred through that somehow. And as long as we don't have armor penetrating rounds, which I'm still trying to get my hands on at this very moment, we will need to deal with whatever we have. Wow, okay, that was an intro. Let's jump into the mission and see what we can do. Okay, time to land. <clears throat> Luckily, it was in the middle of a street biome. So remote starts will help. This is where the Reaper really shines with the extra remote starts. By the way, funny thing, I don't know if you noticed so far, we are uh, pretty much solidly in mid game and we haven't even killed the Viper King so far. That guy had been elusive and we couldn't really pin him down. So and there is so much more content. I don't, I don't think that we will see the content because we're going to die likely beforehand, but just wanted to point out, I found it funny when thinking about just how many enemies are essentially still left as opposed to how little we have gotten done. We've just tried to survive really. All right, Euler, Russ. Really not enough movement here. I tell you what. We're going to approach it from the back entrance. No need to ask twice. Stepping off. Turn four. Okay. So we gotta hurry a bit because timers are tight in these missions. Nine rounds is not a lot. First Praetorians here, Praetorian Shield Maiden. I think these were the ones that can grapple with a shotgun. Praetorian Sterilizer. Uh, that was... Oh yeah, that was one with extra... Um, with extra incinerary grenades. Heavy Bio Assault Trooper. Sounds really bad as well. And we got bandits running into Dark Elders. Trueborn Dark Elder Warrior. Sounds horrible. 
Fanatic Crusader looks like a psionic uh, character. And that Bio Assault Trooper really looks like one that is using shields quite a bit. So these guys, in a nutshell, are threatening already. Wow, the Dark Elders brought a nice texture, by the way. The Dark Elders brought um, really heavy units with them as well. Dark Elder Archons. So what are we talking about? 28 hit points, 2 armor, <clears throat> automatic overwatch. That is nasty. Well, more mechs, more Praetorians, more everything. Elders, of course, do their shenanigans with um, with poison. Good. A few hygiene topics. We're blocking this entrance. No one can climb up. And there's another scouting party. Okay, cool. So I guess question of the day would be can we throw that far, uh, far enough? The answer is likely nope. Hmm. That would be good. It would... Wait, 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 wait. I just think I saw a solution. Well, it would deal some damage, I suppose. But before we do that, we're still we're still in concealment and I would like to use that as far as I'm concerned. This is another round to get into position, just makes make uh, make up some room. And then we can Take a really nice position here and start firing down on them. Sona moves up. Uh, most certainly Hogbite moves up. He's going to get right into the thick, uh, thickets of it um, during the next round. And Russ moves up. A bit of an overwatch and that's it. Next round, uh, due to my own rules, I need to engage. Need to get these guys here out of the train somehow. I hope they are moving forward. Yeah, not bad. I like it. Question of the day is uh, this main train here. Uh, can we explode uh, the cargo? That would be fantastic. If we can remote start this and everybody would take a lot of damage, that, that'll be fine. Ooh, the elders are taking quite a bit of damage. It seems that Advent has taken the better of the Dark Elders here. But I'm always saying that and then the Dark Elders get their turn and start completely steamrolling advent Nah, i think advent definitely has the upper hand here too many of them
If we could land a grenade here, that would be so satisfying. Wow. Three for one with disorientation. That's a nasty set of micro missiles. Uh oh, we do have a problem. Houston, we have a pretty significant problem downstairs. Well, damn it. Now we are in combat. Wow, and Edwin is just completely running over these guys. <laughs> Certainly doesn't help that the elders are targeting civilians instead of Edwin. We do have problems, many, many, many problems. So let's start with the obvious ones, okay? Remote start will not help. The obvious ones are just below us. Getting rid of these guys would be fine. Getting rid of uh, these guys would be fine as well. I think we're in one of those situations where there's just so much going on on the battlefield that there is no great solution to solve it all. So Claymore here. Setting them up. And Claymore here. I know that's quite resource intense, but we need to alpha strike as much as possible now. So double action just to Claymore, right? Okay, so far so good. Um, Euler can hit how many people? One, two, three. Again, one, two, three. Not optimal. If we were to move him forward, that'll be much better. But it would also cost us an action. Could do our strike on some of these guys. Could move forward and then <coughs> and try to cover this side. This would be extremely risky. We need Euler here at uh, the ledge. The dual strike is a decent option, but I think we're not going to pull him, not this turn. Instead, half cover, again, not great, but okay. I want that extra explosion. That'll be dual shred. Same deal over here with Euler likely, but before we do that, and over an action with advanced teamwork.
We do have blue screen rounds, which means this here should be a straight up kill. Down to one HP. That's unfortunate. Good. Efficient uh, action economy. Trying to remove as much armor from the Praetorians and the others as possible. Fully shredded, full shield removal, and that would be a kill. Still got the shield maiden there, not good. Good, but that should be a, another kill. Good, at least the ones that are close to us are down, which is good. We still got the Prime Collector Assassin there, but we're, we're removing fields uh, pieces from the field. Oh, Russ has also death from above. I forgot about it. That is great, buddy. I love it. Good job, man. Got that heavy mech. And I think what we could do is we could hit him, kill. Hmm. Can we deal one more damage to that Fanatic Crusader before that happens? Likely not. Just double checking. 16 to 20. Wow, that shield maiden is bio uh, trooper is super uh, heavy. But I think the Fnatic Crusader is even worse. Shield maiden is also bad, but I hate psionics when the enemies are playing them. When we're playing them, they are fine. Uh, but when the enemy is playing them, they are completely imbalanced. Needs to immediately be deleted. All right, potentially not a crit. Ah, there we go. There was a crit, but not quite a kill yet. You know, can't really kill all of them, likely. Unless this here is critting, we're not going to see any double kill. All right, plus one focus. Oh, we got another dude down here. Uh, okay. Well, 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 Saiken, uh, you you do have a problem. I can move to here into full cover. Relatively speaking, far away. This here is another full cover, which would work. We could move down here, try to kill the cannibal. Unfortunately, our shotguns are not upgraded yet. Could also try to just kill the crusader with a nice little shotgun bolt. And then move downstairs and try to... Try to use our blade storm and our untouchable. All right, so far so good. Another plus one focus that'll give more movement to Hogbind. Implacable. Moving to here. That's a blade storm. Um, a blade storm field. One that would work. And Hopper can just literally get back here and leave the enemy be. I think I would want the front line, in which case that is Lysinator, to receive a protocol with threat assessment. 
So when they want to target uh, him, he's actually in full cover, plus he has an overwatch shot. And that's really my turn. Did it work well? I could argue it was not a bad turn. We killed two, four, five enemies, injured them, and no. Not good. Hates Reapers, easy to hit from high ground. Well, let us hope that she's going to be spotted out in this chaos. Nice, very good shot. Love it. Oh, they're trying to hit Euler because he's in half cover. Untouchable blade storm. Where's the blade storm? Where is the blade storm? Oh, they may may have lightning reflexes after they have been improved. That would be very unfortunate. What for the glory of the elders? What is uh, this treachery? Wait, what? He suicides bombs? Okay, okay. We gotta get the spark down, by the way. That is completely unreasonable. 12 points of damage shredding on top of it. Wow, Edwin has just... This time Edwin has absolutely curb stomped uh, the dark elders and the bandits like it was not even close these guys just overran luckily we didn't cluster up that was helpful Why are you going into our direction? Just jump behind their lines, dude. All right, never mind. Shot wide. That was close. All right, in an hysterical turn of events, we haven't even taken a single point of damage yet. Uh, we've only been shot three times, but it's good. Life's good so far. Oh, and there's one bandit left over. So we are now engaged with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I know there are two here. Thirteen, fourteen. Um, 14 advent hardcore advent plus the chosen okay cool yeah just another day at work i suppose good so still a difficult situation here what are we going to do gotta work on the higher damage enemies fanatic here spark and the praetorians that Praetorian captain, huge problem. Can't let him be unguarded down there. So let's start with getting that spark. All right, so far so good. Full cover for Slicinator. Getting that advent spark. All right, then let's continue. We need as much damage now as possible, as humanly possible. Free so, re reload. Nope, Bennett stays where it is because it's a great mimic beacon for us for now. Instead, we are hitting the Praetorian. 
And with our remaining action here, let's just get rid of Overwatch. Good hit, good hit, very good hit. Down to one hit point. I like it. Okay, I think Hawkbite needs to be the one that uh, deals with the captain. Because he can parry. He can parry. So that's my reasoning for letting him fight. Problem is, there will be another shot. So, sort of need to work on getting this guy down. Unfortunately, the heavy lancer is an issue as well. So, seven points of damage. That's well within the ability of, um, of shooting him with a shotgun. Yeah, well, of course he dodges. We still got uh, mm, we still got Blade Storm left over, and we're in cover. That's why I didn't want to move. Moving here would have caused issues with the Praetorian captain because of flanking, um, and it wouldn't have made sure that the stun monster would have died. Unfortunate. Euler could move to here. Euler could also start getting these guys down. Over here would be fine because it's far enough away from all of them. Could also move to here, but that Although it's full cover, would potentially take us out of action for too long. Let's do this here. Not a perfect position, but an okay one. At least one where we do have agency on the field. And that is often more important than anything else. Nine points... I'll save the dead eye for later. Alright, that worked out just very well. 90%. I think shredding him would not be too bad. And that's not killable. I think we're just shredding him. Also, we do have poison rounds, so that will reduce his aim and his movement. Set up for next round so that we can kill him. Very good. Poison is doing its work. Minus 20 to aim is very much okay. I like it. There is the parry that I was hoping we would get. And our living Mimic Beacon, aka the Bandit, is still doing his thing. Purifier wastes a turn. Come on, let's go. There we go, yes. Very nice. Fanatic Crusader. Puts the guy in stasis. That's interesting because you just kind of messed up your own turn here, really. Another shield maiden and a collector. And a biotrooper who put himself in burning. All right. Well, so far it's going actually reasonably well. Oh boy, another contender. Untouchable, my dude. Alright, we got hit for three. Okay, cool. Good. 
Euler needs to reload. Oh, it's a given. <coughs> that is a given. Let's see, what can we do down here? No matter where we are stepping, it's all bad. But we could kind of start to move up and hit the shield maiden, I guess. What is Hogbite's approach? Other than wildly charging in, flailing and hitting the guys. I mean, Hogbite could indeed do that and actually set some of them up. But we do have an overwatch shot here with a bio trooper that I do not like Hogbite to eat. Unfortunately, Shadow cannot immediately kill him. Oh boy, that's a complicated turn. I think Hogbite will need to likely eat that thing unless... No. Just out of range. Yeah, this is very much going to trigger Overwatch. So who eats the Overwatch is the question. And who deals with the captain? I can't le leave him unchecked. As great as that idea with Hogwarts is just charging in and is going to go batshit crazy is who's dealing with the captain, guys? This is a perfect frost grenade, so that would take those three out. Uh, leaving us with one, two, three, four, and this flank, which is uncovered. Could move all the way to here. That triggers an overwatch, but Slacinator would be in a good position. Don't like it, but... What are what are the alternatives? Someone's got to take the overwatch shot. Well, now we're standing in the open. Great, great, fantastic. And I will need to use the frost bomb because that'll take three of them out. Equally, we're standing in the open. Do we have eight protocol? Still on cooldown. <laughs> this is stupid on so many levels. So if those three are gone, he cannot do anything. That's one shot. We can kill him. Maybe two shots, and we got to deal with something with the uh, with the shield maiden there. I still would like to do this. We're very likely not going to get a better chance of removing three enemies from the battlefield. Okay, question. Can we get these guys down the rocket trooper definitely is in the middle of somewhere Could move and hit it's not a bad choice what are we doing with sonar is the question so we still got these praetorians here i think sonar needs to Sona needs to take that side. Right Acid burn, not perfect, but not the end of the world either. Crit, nice, good job. Hair trigger maybe? No, that would have been asking for a bit too much. 
down to nine hit points. And whilst all of this is going on, whilst all of this is going on, let's block the captain back into going into the uh, inner parts of the house. Disorientation is great. I like it. And we're parrying. Okay, so far so good. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Good, Russ moves up. That's an easy hit. That is not so easy as a hit. We got dual strike though. And I think we should do that. That's a 100% kill. Like it. Very good. So it's one down. We're dealing like what? 8 to 10. No chance for crit. He's at 10. Let's try to hit him. No, too bad. That would have really helped. Is there anyone close to death? No. Moving up into a better position. Oh, I almost forgot about her. How could it, how could I have forgotten about her? Good. Let's hope Slicinator will make it through the turn. He's in the open, but there are other flank targets. Ouch. Nah, he's potentially going to die. Oh, not in range. Cool. Give him the blade storm, please. All right, well, that was to be expected. Lucky that he did not immediately die. But like I said, there isn't that much we could have done. What? He can't just climb the wall? What treachery? Oh, wow, okay. Oh boy. Good, learn something. The Praetorians can climb walls. That is really nasty. Good. We still got a few targets in range. I mean, look, uh, it's a bit of a desperation play here. But I really think he needs to go down. Salvo doesn't end the turn. This shreds him a bit. Some extra falling damage. Not the worst.
We gotta give that Gren and heal to Euler. Can't have another downed member. That captain. I would love to kill him. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. Too far away for shotgun shots. I don't think that that would work. Reloading. Let's hit this guy. Problem is we're still having plenty of enemies uh, there, which we would need to kill. Captain is continues to be an issue. We can take the shield maiden just out of combat. I think this here is the better play even. But needs uh, full focus, and <clears throat> that took one off. Plus, uh, the captain has a target. Now, back to our problem. Uh, I would love to stabilize, but not this round. Instead, we gotta deal with uh, the guys here. Good, one of the Praetorians down. And that's just softening him up, unfortunately. Can't really do much more than that at the moment. Nice hit, by the way. Oh, hair trigger. We could go to full cover here. Captain could maybe flank us. We'll cover here. And then these guys could be our target next turn. Or alternatively, Overwatch, just in case someone moves in. At the moment, they are dealing with Hogbite and uh, with Sonar. So that's a much better front line. That's Overwatch. The assassin moved somewhere. Vanishing winds. And my gut tells me she is getting closer to us. I'm trying to spot her out. Shit. The shadows fail us. Not good. The shadows were failing us indeed. Well, on the flip side, we found the assassin, right? Can't let the Reaper stand in the open. But thanks uh, for the civilian, I suppose, who is openly standing in the middle of a firefight. We're getting, f uh, we're going for full cover here. They lose one action, all of uh, them, and this guy is disoriented. Shield Maiden, come on. Heal. No, that was a miss. Potentially a costly one.
Good. That was uh, 8 to 11 damage. That was the highest damage of all of the enemies. And Hogbite does what he's doing best. Tanking. Tanking, tanking, tanking. We're out of cover. That's a problem. So we got the shield going for us. All right, shield bearer. That's nasty. Okay. It was foreseeable that we would take damage quite a bit. All right. All right. So, let's start healing. Sona needs that extra heal. I think we're potentially going with another heal. Gotta get that shield maiden. Good, untouchable plus implacable. Alright, trying to bait the assassin into thinking that we're vulnerable. The fanatic is our biggest problem. And we have to deal with him almost immediately. Can't see how we are going to stand that level of onslaught for a long period of time. Stun Lance is also a problem, but the Fnatic is just a bigger problem. Got an Overwatch. I'm wondering, nonetheless, if we should just go like this here. Whom are we going to see by standing here? Target preview seems off. This here could be a kill. Well, we do have pain shots, so. Could also kill the captain. Could kill the stun lancer. I need a solid position, that's the problem. And there is none yet. This here is okay, but not great. Let's see what the targets are in full cover here. That's at least the Crusader and this guy. Okay, so I could kill the Crusader and let Hogbite still do his thing right here and tank for us. Uh, if that's maybe the more efficient way in next turn, we're actually going to remove uh, the enemies. Let's try that, come on. Need a hit, need a hit, need a hit. 
Okay, cool. That worked. Biggest damage dealer is off the field for now. Good hogbite could technically just hit him and kill him. I think he's going to do exactly that. Okay, well, not quite, but close. Can't position ourselves in the shadows because this guy is still seeing us. And we don't want to move. So, naturally, we're reloading and are taking care of business this way <clears throat> okay good so now the question of the day is should we just heal hogbite further or are we start trying uh, starting to stabilize slicinator and heal him next turn i think i need that extra that extra sixth uh, individual so he's only unconscious our tanks just need to continue to tank. There is a parry. We still have a couple of reflects for you guys. Okay, I'm fine with that. And not the end of the world. Nice, another reflect. Hawkwight's the just the best. Untouchable. Untouchable. Nice. The bait worked just fine. Hey, okay, so <laughs> we gotta get our egg together here. Revival protocol. Slicinator gets back up. One hit point isn't much. And six hit points would still be one shot, so there's no point in uh, starting to pump healing into him. Did the captain explode? I think he did not. Full cover. 100% hit. There we go. Okay, cool. That worked like a charm. Now we know there are overwatches here. I could nonetheless start hitting these guys and trigger implacable for sonar, which is much needed. I'll take Retaliation, and that is what it is. Can't really change it. <clears throat> nice hit. The Arc Wave is so unbelievably good. Alright, moving to the front with Euler. Well, that guy has defense, so can't really do much against it. There we go, that's a kill. And with that, we have Untouchable. Don't have that many hit points, so I can't just aggressively go anywhere. I'll think about what we do. For now, we want parry on Hogbite. There is a lieutenant, there is a drone, and a trooper, none of which I can immediately kill. The 
could move to here. Out of curiosity, what's our chance to hit that trooper? 90% for reset. Well, not bad. I need all of the damage that I can get. And still at 10 hit points. To here, moving to here would be dangerous though, because uh, the collector drone could hit us. That is an option. Let's see. If we were to fully unload on him, that could be enough to get him into level territory. If we hit, that is. Pfft. Okay, two misses. That's quite the opposite in that case. Twelve. No, that would need to be maximum damage. No. That currently is just not working. Euler hits and deals a good amount of damage, but that's pretty much it. Uh, Euler takes the 8 protocol so that we're getting that sweet overward shot from threat assessment. Our frontline is standing relatively safe and secure, which is end of turn. There's a blade storm here for the Praetorian if needed. That was an 80 or 90 percent hit chance unfortunately it really didn't work that armor's tough. untouchable oh okay that's the untouchable gone I'm under fire. At least we know where oh we're being flanked now Lucky. Okay, well, ouch. Can't really do much here. Alright, so, Sonar, heal. That could be a kill, I think that's a double kill. Nice, Arc Wave is fantastic. Hundred percent kill. We have reloaded and and let's just make sure she cannot. Vanish again. So, how are we going to go about it? Full cover looks like a good idea. And then we're just overwatching. It's 
Slicinator is quite vulnerable, so I really don't want him to stand anywhere near the front line. Here is fine. Let's see, even too far for her to reach. Hogbite parries. And we're overwatching and reloading. Okay, let's see what she does. Potentially summons something. Perch priests, they look nice. And then she vanishes. Are we finding her? No, she hasn't vanished. Kind of just to show up again. Okay, Russ takes a position here. Has death from above as well. Alright, we know she's here. No, we don't know that. Uh, I could remote start even without her being there. Never mind. But now we know where she's at, and that is super helpful. Moving into solid cover. Time to shred her and mark her. Okay, so that works well. Time for a nice little run and gun into a flanking position. Sonar goes in. Critical hit on her. Good job. Full cover for Slicey Nature. Shredding her a bit more. Could have done that before, that would have um, itched out one more point of damage. Hogpite basically just tries to tank her. Fifteen, thanks to the advice, uh, advisory of Reapers and a nice little flanking position. And a crit seals the deal. Great. Great. Well, if we really get her, uh, get her inside, we can make it happen. So that was good. Death from above. Just makes it so much more fun. And we're just overwatching. The priest might mind control. What? Okay, well, perch priests are something different aoe burn damage stun nice we'll 
Hawkbite goes in. Doesn't care about the repercussions here. And Sona hopefully kills the guy. Nice. Thank you. Hair trigger. Okay, well, that was good. Uh, three more turns to get that thing done. Russ will just need to take the damage, I guess. Slicinator overwatches, and here we are anchoring down. Can't even reload. But I think Shadow will need to hack it. I don't believe Russ will be there quick enough. Area move, move, move. Russ sprints as far as he can. We're going to see if it is going to be enough. I'm ready. Reload. Overwatch. 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 Reload. Overwatch. Alright. Let's see if Russ can hack it. Might be just... Short. Yep, it is just short. Well, luckily we had that uh, speed PCS. Oh, and of course the game is now teasing us with enemy protocol. And even a good hack, so Ross would have gotten 20 permanent uh, hacking set increase. Well, can't have it all. The luck in this mission was... More than enough, Slicinator should have been dead. Um, 35 enemies in a small map, including the Chosen. So, yeah, I mean, it's getting harder and harder. And even with Death from Above, as you can see, um, if we're really up against 14, 15 enemies, it starts becoming rough. I think I need to research Mimic Beacons, but so far we haven't even upgraded our weapons to plasma tier which are which which is incredibly needed in order to just chew through the hit points and i think we only had three faceless corpses uh, so it would have been one mimic beacon but yeah that could have uh, saved slicinator i guess it, it's really a situation where if i go into a prolonged firefight uh, we aren't cover they aren't cover Think about it, we just cannot win that. The Praetorians, every single Praetorian effectively counts for two enemies because they can shift an action every single round and then on top of, uh, of that do their own actions. So we're really fighting an uphill battle. And if you have 14 enemies, you can't, you can't beat them by simply killing all of the non-Praetorians so that they uh, can't shift uh, their actions. Well, this here tells tells you all that's needed to uh, be known. Most of them are even shaken. Cool, we got another bio nanoscale vest. That is helpful. I love it. And a hair trigger and a PCS. That's good. Plus another engineer whom we potentially do not need at this point. I mean, we're really okay with engineers. I would much rather like to get more scientists. Can put him here so that we do have enough contacts. Great. And yeah, we can't even remove the negative traits at the moment. 
Did we get a core? Yes, we did. I am torn. I think I want another experimental ammunition because we need um, we need armor penetrating rounds. At the same time, a war suit would be good, but we need the supplies in order to upgrade weapons first. So, experimental ammunition it is. And there's the AP rounds. So at least that will give us an option to deal with those heavily, heavily armored enemies. And let's see what we could do. I mean, we wanted to make contact, right? So that's an option. Alien Alloys and Delirium Crystal are a fantastic option as well. I can't just let that pass by. Fortunately, our scientists haven't kept up with the engineer count. That's a bit of a pity. There were some casualties during that last covert action, Commander. But our troops will all recover after some Very good. So that we have learned even more about the show That could be a great option for us to finish in uh, the hunter and get his weapon. Uh cannons increase the damage of all cannons by one. I think we need to do that. It's too good to not do it. Additional upgrade slot for the assault rifles would be great as well. And I also want to find the raiders, damn it, but we gotta do the breakthrough uh, research. How many more days do we have left um, until the month is over? Six, so it's just, you can only get that one mission, okay? Very good. Who should be getting Dodge? I think Roby is the right one to do that. Re reducing our um, our research speed. An inappropriate Murphy can be on on the mission with him. Plus one damage for the heavy cannons would further feed into our option to just use grenadiers um, and oilers death from above with just one more damage is good that's actually quite quite helpful so going to do that this here is eight days so no that wouldn't work i was just trying to see if there is a possibility for us to uh, to squeeze in the other breakthrough research, but there is unfortunately not. And equally, look at that, guys. We finally got our first promotion to Colonel. Going with Fanfire here. Uh, we'll get Serial uh, for him as well. Dilly G is... Pretty much the um, go-to person, go-to sniper for this run. I think chain shot isn't bad either. That will help. Um, but serial is just fantastic. Specifically together uh, with a chosen rifle, it isn't bad when when we're on low ground. Uh, when we're on high ground, death from above will carry it. Um, and yeah, chain shot. If we are really having a lot of um, XCOM AP in the future we might be able to take that but for now this is kind of our main sniper Dilly G is uh, going to carry this run hopefully from a damage perspective but let's also not forget about Euler uh, he has cracked the mathematical formula of how to use death from above together with dead eye that was super helpful in the last uh, fight also chain shot that was good I like it um kill zone could be great for him as well with just with the amount of ammunition that he has because he will get squad side when uh deploying a kill zone so that automatically helps and he would deal a lot of damage i think that's arguably one of uh, the next uh, skills that we should go for 
Volatile mix definitely is helpful because he has salvo and we had a couple of situations where that two extra grenade damage would have brought the enemies into level damage range. So those are the next skills. And uh, on the top level, I think we're going for rupture because we have just incredibly heavy hitting enemies with a lot of hit points. Okay, so I'm still not going to build something, although the shadow chamber would be good. Um, I want the storm gun to be upgraded next, and that's almost done with researching. Well, look at that. Another facility, another terrible enemy right there. Avatar project is completely out of hand. Five facilities now. Need to do a facility run soon. We completed our research in remarkable time, Commander. Good. Finally, we got the storm gun. Oh, and they offer us plus one damage on shotguns. I don't know. I mean, we got to take it. Uh, that would mean we already got the plus one on uh, the shotguns then and the plus one damage on our uh, on our normal guns. So that adds up over time. If we can get plus one uh, damage on plasma weapons, that would be phenomenal. Which, by the way, stacks with the extra weapon damage. Ultramarine. Uh, something is uh, going on. I don't know what the Ultramarine does, but it does not sound like it would be uh, advisable to let that go through. It sounds like something you would want to counter immediately. Good. So far, everything is fine. Just continuing to scan really for resources. Double checking. Can we remove traits? No, we cannot. Can we upgrade bond? No, we cannot. Okay, just double checking because a couple of our soldiers are coming out of uh, the map bay. Oh. Mary Murphy, is that inappropriate Murphy's wife, Dr. Mary Murphy? Who would uh, marry someone like inappropriate Mary? No, here's the thing. It's his ex-wife. She's the intelligent one, and he, I don't know, was a, a high school sweetheart. Then he became more and more often inappropriate uh, old uncle, and now he's, he's completely um, torn uh, and shattered from the... A divorce has lost everything in the divorce settlement prior to the aliens coming in then became an alcoholic and was starting to live in trailer park so that's inappropriate murphy's uh, unfortunate um, story and mary murphy is his wife now we certainly can't let him go into this mission because there is a real chance that this scientist will not uh, will have an air quote accident uh, during the mission when Murphy is there. So we got to separate them nicely. Other than that, it actually looks quite good. Scientists is what we need. Uh, bandits and Dark Elders in a VIP extraction mission. I like it. Let's finish this here real quick. Strategic resource located. Very good. One more day until the supply drop, which is good as well. And Let's not forget, we actually have a shotgun upgrade. Build items, weapons, and storm gun is exactly what we want to upgrade. We could upgrade the normal pistols for the snipers. I think that's not a bad call. The bullpup is too expensive for now. Skirmisher needs to wait. Armor wise, Hellweave. Hmm. 
don't need that yet, but would certainly be interesting against uh, the chrysalids, right? Good. Beam pistol. That uh, takes this upgrade off the table. And there would be a few more that I would like to take here. 200 supplies for massive plus one uh, damage on flanked enemies. I like that. 10% critical hit for snipers. Look, I mean, all of these are great, but they cost a thousand together. Don't have the money for that yet. Okay. Before we're flying there, one last uh, routine. Just checking through the options here. Nah, not yet. We need the extra points. I sincerely hope um, that Hogbite will get Bladestorm. That would be fantastic on the Colonel rank. But if not, then it's also fine. I will showcase that uh, Templars are great even if you don't have Bladestorm because there is that stigma that you need Bladestorm in order to have a great Templar. But that's not the case. You they are actually quite good even without. Yeah, not happening here. Nothing. Would have wanted to get kind of an upgrade, but we have already uh, gotten all of the upgrades. Improved shotguns is happening as well as the improved... Um, the improved... Uh, cannons that uh, both of uh, these will be helpful to give us more damage if we get that extra guerrilla tactic school um, for the rangers then that would be another plus one damage for flank targets and we finally would see the 13 14 15 uh, potentially more with tail and rounds 15 16 17 points of uh, critical hits from for flank targets that we have been waiting for the shield for the, uh, for the the assaults is quite good for the type of run that we're doing. I am I'm a bit uh, miffed about uh, the aim penalty, and maybe I should uh, actually give them a superior aim as well, just to make sure that uh, they would be that they would be hitting it nicely i mean the math is quite easy right you get 14 extra hit points uh, you get a disorienting attack it's not as strong as uh, the um a rushy sword and maybe when we get a rushy things will change because uh, a rushy plus uh, plus the reaper ability uh, could lead to chain kills and to resets so that is quite a good argument as well and with untouchable in particular you typically don't uh, face any problems um yeah the minus 10 aim penalty that's a bit of a bummer but uh, we can work around it anyways let's move uh let's move uh to the mission speaking by the way about aim penalties you know uh, who does not have an aim penalty my viewers because um, you can prove that by the way because if you just aim for that like button down there, you will find uh, that uh, that is quite easy to hit. It's actually in a flanked position at the moment. So you might want to try to uh, to hit it. Anyways, that brings us to the end of today's mission. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, see you later in two days and take care. Bye bye.